Ah, a pep. The dragon sovereign of Verger, the most adaptable life form in all of Tivat. A pep is also the second greatest crackhead Tivat has ever seen, and quite literally the oldest character in the game by a country mile. And yeah, someone might go, no, it's the traveler, and look. Any guess as to the twins' true age would be a complete shot in the dark. I mean, yeah, there's the line about them seeing stars born and die, but if that's to be taken literally, that means the travelers could be billions of years old, which I, yeah, you want to talk age creep. <laughs> I personally, if anyone cares, <laughs> Personally, just think that line was meant to show that they've traveled so far and wide that they've seen stars be born and they've seen stars die. I mean, I'm sure they're very old. There is that one fortune teller in Sumeru who said the traveler was going to live on for tens of thousands of years. Health prospects, no problem at all. <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. Your life shall continue on for... For... Huh? Many, many tens of thousands of years? Impossible. Uh, but come on, man. Billions of years old. Let's let's let, let's be reasonable, fellas. Let's okay. Let's be let's be reasonable. <laughs> Morax is the other candidate that people believe to be ancient beyond his stated age of six thousand years old. Mainly due, I guess, to the facts that he's said he's dwelt upon this world for over six thousand years. And I guess the word dwelt turned everyone's heads and led some to speculate he's much older than his stated age. And in actuality, comes from beyond, which I find weird, as the next part of the speech is literally just damn i'm getting old might be might be, might, might be time to, to hang up the boots <laughs> as you know i've dwelt upon this world for more than six thousand years i witnessed the founding of leo together with the adepti three thousand seven hundred years ago even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form, and that the end of my time had not yet come. And another thing is that there have been points in Tivat's history when he was described as young, mainly in relation to the solar chariots. And the records of Jue Yun writes, quote, In a past beyond memory, when even Rex Lapis would still have been young, a star fell from the sky into the barren plains west of Liyue. And then the Soul of Vermilion said adds on to this writing, quote, It is said that Rex Lapis was still young. The sun was a chariot that raced across the earth. When the three sisters of the night sky were martyred in a calamity, the solar chariot fell into a deep gorge. So hopefully this shows Rex Lapis is about his stated age, but man, I just know someone's going to go, oh, oh, hold on a second, Dowie. <laughs> <laughs> hold, hold on a second, you damn fool. If you look back at the at the, at the text, it actually states Rex Lapis would still have been young. So clearly the person that wrote this was mistaken. Rex Lapis did not reveal his true age. His true age, actually, I believe, is in the ballpark of uh, seven quadrillion years. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Yeah, sure, fuck it. I, I have nothing to say about that. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna call up the oldest character to grace our screens in Tibet this far, just cause... Uh, I'll come straight the gods. <laughs> that obviously means that aside from being the current Dendro Sovereign, a pep is also the original Dendro Sovereign, unlike the current Hydro Sovereign Nerva Let, who's a reincarnation. Fun fact. By the way, Apep is obviously based off the Apep in the real world, who is a serpent in Egyptian mythology. Apep, also known as the Lord of Chaos. Apep was also the greatest enemy of the progenitor god Ra, the god of the sun, the king of the heavens, and the creator of all life. Sound familiar? I, I wonder, has, 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 has Genshin Impact had its own progenitor god? Oh, wait! It does, and its name is the Primordial One, a progenitor god hailing from beyond the stars. Back to Tevat's lore, Apep was once a proud and mighty sovereign who lived in the thriving rainforest and had dreams of populating Tevat with a bunch of little gremlins, whatever the hell these things are. On the flip side, however, Apep is now an incomplete sovereign who resides in the desert with hate in its heart and no will to fight. But how did things end up like this for dear ol' Apep? 
God ah, damn it, it was, it was those drugs, wasn't it, huh? Anyway, it all started untold eons ago, when the greatest being who ever lived, the Primordial One, descended unto Tevat, fought a war against the Sovereigns, beat all the Sovereigns, including Apep, and remade Tevat in its own image. Apep, of all people, knew the stakes of the war, as it was Apep itself who said, In war, the victor would inherit the right to shape the world, while the losers must turn into ash. Following the original war, things were going swimmingly for a time until that bastard crackhead Dragon King Nibelon came back to Tevat with the good ol' Good ol' forbidden knowledge, also known as Crack for the Dragons. He tried to run it back with the Heavenly Principles, fucking died, and that was that. A pep, however, like a crack-addicted girlfriend, decided she too want some of that good ol' Ah, good ol' forbidden knowledge, said fuck the Just Say No campaign, and in a move that would've gave Nancy Reagan a fucking stroke, decided to just go after it. <laughs> Thankfully, as a pep stated, a heaven-sent spike put an end to this foolishness. But I didn't give up on searching for a way to turn the tides, even after the death of the Dragon King. As I attempted to collect more forbidden knowledge from the corners of the world, as it was on the verge of collapse. I was stopped by the giant spike that fell from the sky. Living in the desert full time now and with no love for humanity, anytime humans tried to build civilizations there, a pep and her goon squad would do a little trolling as they had quote, let the sea of sand rage like boiling water and swept houses down as if they were falling leaves. Meaning they had just like <laughs> destroyed everything that was being set up. <laughs> you petty bitch. <laughs> Some time would pass before a new plug decided to enter town, once again affording a pep with the opportunity to grab some of that good old, good old forbidden knowledge thanks to King Desheret. His ambitions continued to grow, and he planned to establish a powerful kingdom in my domain. Although I didn't think much of him, I allowed his actions under one condition. The condition was that after his death, all the knowledge he came to accumulate would belong to me. You see, the two made a deal. In exchange for letting Deshret build a kingdom in the desert, a pep would receive the crack- or I mean, Jesus Christ, or I mean forbidden knowledge she had been longing for after King Deshret's death. After King Deshret nabbed some forbidden knowledge with the help of Nabu Malakata, who was the, the true plug, let's be honest, he kind of just went, oh shit, this is, I am tweaking out of my fucking mind right now. <laughs> Nigga, I gotta die. He then made his way to a pep who proceeded to eat Deshret, hoping to gain the knowledge, and uh, uh, yeah, pep did not get the knowledge. <laughs> Instead, what Apep gained was the apocalypse. Apep would then spend the next couple thousand years trying to deal with the pain, unable to actually do anything with the knowledge, which is which is hilarious if you think about it, bro. I clown the Sovereigns a lot, yeah, the crack addicts, whatever, <laughs> but at least Nibelung handled the shit like a pimp, man, bro. He left the world, came back with so much forbidden knowledge, it broke the world, and despite this, was still fighting the primordial one like a fucking Giga Chad. And I mean, yeah, he died, but he went out swinging, bro, so I tipped the fucking hat, man. A pep ate one, like, tiny human worth of forbidden knowledge and was decommissioned for the next 3,000 years. <laughs> this is, this isn't it, man, this ain't it. After we saved Ermin's soul by removing the forbidden knowledge, the forbidden knowledge was also removed from a pep, but because it had become a part of a pep, because remember, a pep is the most adaptable being in Tibet, what was now left was a big void, which if left untreated would have destroyed all of Sumeru. So we went and saved a pep, yay! Nowadays, all a pep really is interested in is watching to see how far we get before we run into it. The Alpha and the Omega.